Welcome to Bring Your Brilliance. Are you ready to find and amplify your voice? Looking to be inspired by those who are already out there making it happen? Listen in as we shine a light on those who bring their full, authentic selves to do what they love, make no apologies, and don't try to fit into other people's boxes. With your host, Carla Taylor, who, after years of being inspired by the brilliantly shining people she was meeting, decided others need to hear these stories too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bring Your Brilliant radio show. I am your host, Carla Taylor, and we are back again today with some fantastic information for you. I am going to be interviewing Renee Deal in just a moment, but first I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the things that I've been doing to uh, manage and ignite my own energy. Uh, That's a lot of what I talk about with a lot of my clients and what you'll be hearing as you listen to more and more episodes is really how do you bring your brilliance in a consistent way? And that, for me, really is about bringing your best self and doing the things that you do well and doing them consistently and really creating a life around consistently bringing your brilliance to work and everywhere else with you. And so one of the things that I've been working on is, like I said, managing my own energy. We're going to talk in a moment about actually a session that I did with Renee. Uh, But I also am very cognizant of when I have high and low energy in my work. So right now I'm on a very uh, heads down type of project in front of my computer, which is not my favorite place to be. And so I'm deliberately scheduling in breaks into my day. And I just had to share because I'm kind of excited (laughs) that yesterday, I, at the end of my working day, I worked till five. And then my reward was I actually went, uh, it was a beautiful weather day. So I went and did a quick test drive of a Ford Mustang convertible. I went to the gym and then I went kayaking on a, a lake nearby. So it was really, really fun. It was really rejuvenating. Came home and worked some more. Uh, but it's really about managing your energy and keeping your energy going, especially when you know you've got a lot of low energy stuff that you're doing for a while. So I just wanted to share that win. And now let's go ahead and jump into talking with Renee because she's all about energy. And um, so a little bit of background. Uh, <clears throat> as as you know, finding your voice and bringing your brilliance starts with having the physical health and emotionally emotional energy to fuel your journey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Renee is a compassionate and authentic practitioner who specializes in energetic living, and that is the name of of your company. Is that correct, Renee? Yes, it is. Yes. So we will talk more about how to find her and website, but it is energetic living. She walks the talk and has worked to transform her own health, mind, body, and spirit. She now employs a multitude of modalities, techniques, to help her clients transform their emotional and digestive challenges to unlock their true inner joy and happiness. So as you're listening, please feel free to call in with your questions to learn more about Renee's own personal journey as well as how she uses natural healing and the process of the body, uh, the natural healing process of the body to help energize and ignite the energy for her clients around the world. She does work internationally. She does work online. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and my experience with that. She helps guide people from the emotional baggage and trauma of their lives to live a life full of joy, love, and vitality. So, Renee, let's go ahead and jump right in. Tell us a little bit more about you, what all that, all those wonderful words actually mean, <laughs> and how did you get here to this part of your journey? So, to walk us a little bit through your background, what you used to do in your career even before, and how you've gotten here. But let's start with what is. What are we talking about? What is it that all of that stuff means that you do? And then what was your journey to get there? Oh, girl, it's been a journey, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, it was started out a few years ago um, that it started out with the health of my middle daughter who struggled um, for years, about seven years, with just severe IBS. And, uh, you know, we went the whole Western medicine route, and it was just pill after pill, and there's just really were not resolving my daughter's issues, and, you know, we were getting to the point that she literally just could not get out of bed. I mean, she lost wow. probably three or four months of her senior year in high school. It was bad. Oh, wow. That's yeah, really so we were just yeah, I think there's such a... Go ahead. 
And I think, I think we're there's just, such a, a place um, for Western medicine in our in our world, but there's also a lot that it lacks sometimes. Like I think Western medicine tends to treat the symptoms and not the root problem. And so it's something I've also found in my own health journey is that I need to look at all of the different things available and, and look sometimes deeper than what information I might be getting from one source or another. And that's what I'm so thrilled about in, in finding you and what you do is there's been so much uh, that that I've looked at and done, and you kind of combine it all. So let's, sorry, get back to you. And so your daughter lost, you said, three or four months of her senior year. Yeah, I just lost three or four months, and it was just, um, you know, heartbreaking for us as parents. And, you know, top specialist at Riley Hospital here in Indianapolis just, you know, looking at our daughter and saying, no, suck it up, this is the rest of your life. Well, I'm sorry, you don't say that to a mama bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we just... So clearly uh, that was not an answer you were years. going to accept. No, we weren't expecting that at all. So we just had somebody uh, come up beside us and say, hey, you know, can, would you mind having an open mind? And we're like, sure. And that really just started my whole um, journey down with um, alternative medicine. Okay, so you didn't get an answer you even wanted to hear. You realized there's got to be something more. Now, who was it that came and asked if you were open to something different? Yes, we had a friend um, that uh, was involved with uh, alternative medicine and uh, knew a kinesiologist. So we okay. took um, our middle middle daughter to this kinesiologist, and he was able just to deliver us some really great information in one hour. And it totally scientifically made sense to everything that was going on with our daughter, and I was totally blown away. Wow. So you got this great information from the doctor. What happened next? So we, uh, you know, it took about a year uh, to heal her. Um, It was not an easy journey for her, and we had to look at Nutrition, we worked with him. Um, he was a kinesiologist, so he worked with a lot of, lot of muscle response testing uh, to really figure out what was going on with her. And what we figured out was that she was very protein deficient and fat hmm. deficient, meaning that she was either, one, not eating enough, two, not digesting it, or a combination where she's not eating, digesting, or utilizing, and her body wasn't utilizing it enough. And so what that ha- what that did was made her very, um, in her colon, uh, she was almost to the point, because she had so much toxins in her, she was almost to the point of bleeding out. Wow. That sounds and, awful. And yet, Western medicine, I know, it was. And yet, Western medicine, you know, wanted to just pop another pill in her where, with alternative medicine, they definitely had um, us looking at some root causes, so having to change her food, changing her diet. Now, at this time, we weren't um, looking at the emotional aspect. That is really my 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 passion now. Um, so that, that actually comes later in the journey. But, you know, just trying okay. to help her, that then changed my health. Um, and guided me to nutrition. The nutrition guided me to be a Loomis certified practitioner, which is basically the enzymes that saved my daughter's life. And from there, we went to emotions. So I'm a very well-rounded, uh, energetic living practice. And so what you do now, a lot of people say things like mind, body, and spirit. Even the hospital I worked with before, they, they used to talk about that a lot. But you really mean it. <laughs> You really, I, you I really mean across. it. <laughs> All of those I things do. in a way I, I have not seen. So for me, for uh, most, so I've, I've had my world opened up. My mom actually was super into nutrition, and she used to teach nutrition classes at the school, and she was in the Better Homes and Gardens magazine about her nutrition. So I knew a lot about nutrition growing up. And then I, of course, had traditional medicine and, and exercise and all the things that I knew from that part of my journey. 
And then my mom was also the one who kind of found this whole alternative health world as well. And so I grew up with a lot of awareness of a lot of different possibilities and ways to solve your own health challenges. And I think that's one of the things that, that people often find when they do start to have health problems is growing up or in Western society, most of us just think you get sick, you go to the doctor. And sometimes now people are talking more about mental health and going to a, a psychiatrist or psychologist. But really, it's this whole, everything's being so interconnected and looking at every different part of what's affecting you and your body and your experience. And I have found, like, silos for me. Like, I found over here to go to this chiropractor and over here to go to this osteopath and over here to go to this, um, you know, the, the nutritional supplements person. And so I've, I've piecemealed it together <laughs> in my life. Uh, but what I'm so amazed at and meeting you and working with you is that you go across all of that. You are not in just one arena that then somehow affects the rest because it does, but you affect all of them across truly physical, emotional, mindset, mental wellness, all of those things. You're able to help work with and find problems you may not be able to solve them all from what I understand, but you can certainly pinpoint and open up what needs to happen next. Is that an accurate statement for you? That would be a, a great accurate uh, statement for me. Um, as I was going through nutrition and learning more about nutrition and then uh, learning more about uh, enzymes, the energy of enzymes, I I intuitively knew that there was this huge, huge missing piece. And so I had to really um, take a step back um, a year or two ago to really recognize what this piece was, even to recognize it in myself and just do some self-work on myself. And once I did that, then this this whole picture of, truly of what I wanted to encompass in my company really started to, the picture came together very brilliantly. So that is actually a perfect cliffhanger setup for you to fully explain what you just said, and we're getting ready to go to our first break. So let's end there. So people have to tune back in to hear the full story of, of what that was. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We're going to discuss more about what that thing that you realized was missing and what you were able to do to work on yourself to be able to bring it all together. So how did you go from learning, like I was just talking about, all these different things into pulling it all into place into one big encompassing solution that you now offer? So let's go ahead. You're listening to Bring Your Brilliance with Carla Taylor. We are interviewing Renee Deal with Energetic Living. We are talking about igniting your energy, and we will be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 
or Skype and Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show here on the Inspired Choices Network, and I am your host, Carla Taylor. Today, our topic is Ignite Your Energy. We're talking to Renee Deal, who just shared with us kind of her journey of what opened her eyes to the need for something more and different to help her own daughter and her own family, and she then has propelled that forward into understanding there was something missing is what you mentioned right before break. So let's start there and tell us what it, what it was that you were able to find that was missing and how you incorporated that into what you're doing now. Thank you so much, Carla. So we what it happened is, uh, you know, I go to a lot of learning on all this, uh, on all the digestive and all the enzymes, and I was at a particular conference, and uh, just a friend of mine uh, brought to me this um, this uh, product called Emotion Code. It's actually a program, not a product. I apologize. And this program was really uh, very unique, and she was trying to do it with a couple other people that didn't really understand muscle response testing. So I'm like, bring it on. I've got this. So, you know, she was working with me, and I just got so intrigued and went home and got the book and started really studying it, and then I really started working on myself as far as releasing um, these emotional traumas or releasing emotional baggage that I had. Um, and even during this time, there was a, there was a statement that just, that just stuck with me so much. And it was a statement that my husband had said to me uh, on more than one occasion. And the statement that really just stung at my heart was he would say, I know you love me, but I often don't feel like you love me. Mm-hmm. And that just just took me aback because, you know, at this time, this is a man that I've been with and been married at that time was maybe 26 years, it's 29 now. And I'm like, why? Why does he not feel feel this this deep love I have for him for this this appreciation I have for him and what I end up discovering is I have this heart wall this this you know I'm I'm 51 now and you know I've had many years to build up a lot of emotional baggage Carla I don't know about you but Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a long (laughs) time to build this up (laughs) I think we we all get that there for sure by the time we get into our 40s and 50s there's there's a lot that if you don't deal with it and process it you can be carrying so much around and not even realize it so you really don't you don't realize how it affects you yeah you you've mentioned a couple times the muscle response testing and of course i know what that is but there's a lot of our listeners who probably have no idea what that even means let's let's break it down just a little bit and the so, so the thing that was missing was the emotional piece is that correct it, it is part of the, the piece. It was part of the piece. Yes. Okay. So you had looked into the health and physical challenges that your daughter was having. You discovered the nutrition components behind it. Then you realized there was an emotional component that was still needing to be addressed. And you also saw it in yourself. And the example that you just gave us with your husband that you weren't showing up how you wanted to show up. And a lot of it had to do with this baggage and what you're calling a heart wall. So we're going to talk a little bit more deeper into that, but first let's just go to the, back to that basic, what is muscle response testing, and how is that used? Well, muscle response testing is just this ability to set aside your own energy for the energy of others. Um, I am very Christ-centered. So when I go about doing this, I I will actually just say a prayer that God will bless the session and that he will use me as a vessel and that during that time that I become his eyes, hands, and ears to be able to deliver or hear his message. And in doing that, mental response testing is the ability to ask a body a question and receive a response 
by how the my muscles react. So my most common method is what's called the ring and ring method. So if I were to ask my body, my body right now, and listeners, you know, can't see this, so they're going to have to kind of see it in their <laughs> in their mind. If I were to ask my body a question right now, like my name is Renee, that's a really it's a very true statement. And so my muscles, when I use what's called the ring and ring method, is going to become very taut. Okay, so it's going to be very tight. I'm not going to be able to break that bond. But if I were to say, my name is Carla at right now, that bond or that, that, is, that muscle cannot withstand that because it's not a truthful statement. Now, how does this so work when like I'm working with clients? So it's almost like a lie detector. So your your body yes. immediately knows when you're telling the truth or not, and your body muscles actually respond at a micro level to to yes. tell whether or not so, it, you're being honest or lying. So that is already fascinating, and that's something I came across a few years ago where someone was able to actually use my arm and press down on it and see if my muscle response was true or false, right, like you're saying. But what I've never seen is what I think you're about to explain is that I thought you and I, when we first set up our session, would have to meet person so that you could do the muscle response test on me and test my own micro level muscles to know whether or not something was true for me. However, what I learned was that we did not have to be in the same room. And in fact, we purposely did our session online uh, through, I think it was a Zoom call or a Skype call or something. So, so talk to me now about that level. How does that work? How does that work? It's, it's just <laughs> incredible. So, you know, we have this magnificent God that just has given us these these beautiful abilities to help humankind. And so when I lovingly ask my God to set aside my energy for the energy of others, when I do that, then I actually am doing the lie detector test as you identify it Within that person's energy, I have worked across the pond in UK. I've worked across the world in Dubai. I've worked across, all across the United States in doing this muscle response testing and really being able to identify um, what the subconscious mind or what God really needs me to know for this client to have these emotional releases to recognize and release what is no longer serving them at a very deep level. So your body, and this is what I observed in our session, your body actually picked up on my energy somehow through the computer even and was able to to respond in your body how my body would have responded if you had been here with me. So when you did that ring testing where you're pulling your fingers against themselves, <laughs> um, and you were able to test, okay, my name is Carla, my name is Renee, whatever. So for me, when it was Carla, it was true and, and the muscles held. And when you said Renee for me, it, it didn't stay, even though your name is Renee. So you really were, you know, and, and, and the whole spiritual connection too. I know a lot of people don't understand this, especially if you're hearing this for the first time, but even if you've heard it before, there are a lot of Christians who believe this is not Christian and I think it's kind of wooey, wooey, weirdo stuff. So talk to me a little bit about that. I know that's something that you and I discussed briefly, but tell me more about how you see that and how it works within your Christian faith. It took me some time to work through that, Carla. Um, I, I have to be very honest. I was not going to do this originally because I didn't really feel like it fell uh, into my Christian faith. And I kept telling this friend of mine that uh, I was not going to go to this conference. And I just basically told her, you know, if God wants me to go to this, he's going to have to kick me in the backside to make me go. <laughs> and, I, and I kid you not, 30, 30 days before this seminar, before I was to really learn, you know, what I was to learn, I literally woke up one morning and I told my husband, it's like, honey, I got to go. I have to go to Utah. He's like, why? I said, I don't know. I said, God's telling me I have to go. And he's like, okay, here you go. So the way I, you know, have reconciled this within my own Christian faith is that 
God is more powerful, and we we're, we are the ones that put the brake on his power for us. And so if we open ourselves up, I pray through every session, I pray every client through every release, because this is not me doing this. It, this is, I mm-hmm. call upon God. Um, I do not call upon my own power. This is not Renee Deal releasing this. This is God, and I am working on his behalf and not on my own behalf. So that is how um, I have reconciled uh, myself that um, that I am okay to do what I'm doing because I am being spiritually led in the direction to honor God, and I have promised him that in all things that I do that I am going to honor him. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know we've got listeners from all around the world and, and of every faith, so I am asking this specifically because I know this has come up for for Christians sometimes, but I do believe that there is an energy um, that we are all connected with. And I know a lot of Christians say, okay, well, it has to be scientifically proven or there has to be the science behind it or not calling upon whatever else. Um, But you and I talked about how you really are that empty vessel allowing God to flow through you, which is what Christians, you know, we believe in the Bible. And the other part is um, from a scientific background, one of my favorite authors and speakers is a woman named Jill Bolte-Taylor, and she actually is a scientist who had a stroke herself. And so she wrote a book called A Stroke of Insight, and she's been on Oprah, and, and there's a TED Talk and all sorts of things with her talking about her experience. But she had a stroke and actually had enough scientific knowledge to be an observer of her own stroke experience while she was going through it, even though in that moment – she couldn't speak or form logical words because that part of her brain is where she had the stroke. But she was able to later remember and recount what happened when she did get her her speaking abilities back. But she talks about not having a wall between her and everything around her. She couldn't speak, but all she could do was feel the energy of the people in her um, in her room and of like in the in the, the the hospital room, like when she was walking in the hallway, she could feel the energy of the pe- the patients and the doctors, and she didn't even know what the doctor was trying to tell her, but she could sense the energy that the one doctor was really worried, and another doctor came in and was very there to help and help some students learn, and so she could discern all of that simply from the energy in the room. And she said she, when she recounts that she didn't know where she ended and everything else began, she simply experienced the world in terms of energy. It's really fascinating. So if you're interested in that, definitely check her out, Jill Bolte Taylor. Uh, but when we come back, I want to hear. We're getting ready to go to another break. But Renee, when we come back, I want to hear much more about this. Then, so we we kind of got into hows of the methyl response testing and the fact that you can do it remotely. So let's get then more into what it is that you actually do and and what it is that you've been able to work through with the emotion code and all of that. And I also still want to hear a little bit more about your career background and journey that got you to this point and why you were even thinking the way you were thinking to start digging more into this and start doing it yourself. So let's go ahead and take a quick break. Again, this is Carla Taylor with the Bring Your Brilliance radio show on Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello again. This is Carla Taylor on the Bring Your Brilliance radio show here on Inspired Choices Network. 
And we are continuing our discussion with Renee Deal about energetic living and igniting your energy. Just ended on talking about the energy that connects all of us in the world. So let's start there and pick up from there about what it is that you do with that and now you know, going forward from, from your excuse me, your story that you've been sharing with us. Thank you so much, Carla. So what I do is I have taken the emotion code to a different uh, level called the body code. So it's energy work, and that's really where we identify and correct imbalances that can cause emotional and physical problems for people. So this, our human body just has this powerful ability. We we have Uh-oh, to I put think, forward no. the effort. We have to put forward the effort to make those conditions right. And that's how this beautiful ability between the emotion code and the body code comes into play. And then I work in nutrition and enzymes, so the, the energy of nutrition, the energy of enzymes really to heal the physical body, nutrition to heal the physical body, and then we've got the emotion code and the body code to to uproot and figure out emotionally what is going on and then to heal the emotional roots um, of our subconscious mind. So the emotion code and the body code, if I understand it from having gotten a little tiny bit of experience of it, is actually a program with a series of charts and pages of information and all sorts of things that you're able to use as tools to ask certain questions and be able to go to certain places, get some answers as you're doing that muscle response testing, specifically around either something going on with, in this case, my body or my emotions as we were doing our session. Is that an accurate statement? That is a a very accurate statement. And you would be just so surprised on where the, uh, what I like to call the rabbit trail. You would be so surprised to see where that rabbit trail will really uh, take you uh, energetically into the body. And the, the coolest part that I have been able to discern is when I energetically find out, you know, where this emotion is at in the body. And let me uh, make a statement here that when we are emotionally going through uh, whatever negative emotion it is, that that emotion is really at that particular time, no matter the age, is going to go to the weakest part of the body. And so my goal Hmm. is really to find where those emotions are at, where the the weak link in the body was at, and respond to that link. And really, really we're just calling out those emotions and really determining, okay, emotionally, what were you feeling at that time to the point of uh, finding the creation point? At what age was that emotion going on? Was Is there anything else that we need to identify with that emotion? And then how do we how do we link that to digestively what's going on in the body? And then how can we nourish that with, with enzymes and food so that can, we can really pull you together uh, in the full mind, body, and spirit that you and I talked about, that you t- talked about earlier, and how I'm really trying to guide my my company that really no one else is doing. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. I think what I'm myself just starting to discover, and, and I know you kind of hear about it in different ways, like in psychology and everything else, they talk about being an emotional age if you had a trauma around age 12, then you might be stuck emotionally at that age. But I've never really heard it the way that you just explained it. And I know, I mean, we all can even observe, like when you're going through a heartache, it's called a heartache because it actually aches in your physical heart. It physically hurts when you're going through that emotion. And in fact, both of my sons recently have had some challenges with girlfriends over the summer, and they've both been talking to me about this heartache that they're feeling and how do they work through those emotions. And so we, we, we recognize it when we're going through something, that physical response. But what I hear you talking about and what I'm starting to recognize too is not only do you have it in that moment, but those things then almost like imprint into our bodies and might stay there if we don't deal with them. 
And that, that's fascinating to me that we not only carry psychologically those issues that might have dented our mental and emotional growth, but it's actually physically affecting our body, even something that might have happened. And you and I did this in our session. I think it was something from like 10 or more years ago that we needed to address it. I had no idea. I, I personally had no idea that was anything that was affecting me whatsoever until it came up for us. So talk to me a little bit more about some of that. That part is, to me, still just blows my mind. It is um, when I am able to locate, you know, this creation time and kind of pat, take the client back to that time, it's like, you know, basically what we have to do is recognize and honor the emotion of, of that particular time period. It's not necessarily that we have to talk, you know, for two hours about that particular moment, you know, like a psychologist or a psychiatrist, which is not what I am. What we have to do is mm -hmm. we have to recognize that emotion. We have to call it out and say, you know, I, I recognize what is going on. I, I know exactly why it's there. Now, why is it there? Because when we, um, I think I said this to you um, during our session, is, is Carla, when we're running from the bear, and that bear, that bear can be, you know, a physical bear where you're running from the bear. It can be uh, a nutritional bear. It can be a structural bear where something is structurally going on with our body, or it can be an emotional bear. So whatever that emotional bear is, it could be a divorce. It could be, you know, a sick child. It can be, you know, it could be legal issues. Whatever that bear is that's chasing you, the problem with that is, is we have a tendency to stuff it down, and we stuff it down, and we don't really recognize it, honor it, and go through the emotion at the time. So it's like we stop the tears, we stop the emotional reaction because we don't have time to honor that, that moment that we're having because we're too afraid uh, if we let it go at that particular time, that we're actually just going to lose it. We're going to have a nervous breakdown. We're going to, you know, we're going to be put in loony bin or, or people are going <laughs> to see us as weak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is really a really bad part about our society is is people are, are said to be weak if they, if they're, if they show their emotions. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I don't understand that. And so what our goal is really is to go back in time, recognize why that emotion was there, call it out, let's release it, let's pray through it, and let's, you know, let's let God take care of it. Let's, let's lay that at the cross and let's be done with it. And let's let that emotional healing transfer to the physical body. Now the physical body, we've uprooted, you know, some of that emotion. Now we can look at the, the physical body. Now what do I need to do? to support and nourish your physical body. And my specialty is working with, I'm a Loomis certified practitioner, and so that's working with, with enzymes to really pinpoint exactly what's going on and then what nutrition also can, can help to, to nourish the body so that, you know, we're having just a very, very thorough and well-rounded ability for the body to pick up and heal on its own. That's so awesome, and I, I love what you're describing earlier with the really that process of letting it go. And just coincidentally, or whatever you want to call it, uh, right before I got ready to, to come on this show, I was talking to my 17-year-old son. He said, Mom, how do I let emotions go? Like, literally, that was his question to me, <laughs> because he wanted to get over a girlfriend, that the uh, next girlfriend. And... And it's that letting go. And, and then as I talk to him, it's kind of like you have to have this release valve or it's like a pressure cooker, you know, that if you keep those emotions in and step them down, which is actually typically what he does a lot. I think we all do, of course. Um, but it, it, it will explode out in, in yucky, awful ways and in, in opportune, inopportune moments if we don't deal with it in the moment. And so I think that happens in our bodies, too, when we don't release something and we're just stepping it down. and some of it, absolutely, I think we have a society where people still often feel weak if they show emotion. But the other part of it is, and you and I talked about this for my own life, is that I am busy. And if anybody knows me, I've been a single mom of triplets for many, many years. I've been a business owner. I don't have time. Whether I want to cry or not, I don't have time 
to, to deal with most of my emotions because I'm just always running, always on the go, always going from one thing to the next. And I really feel like sometimes I just have to like shore up and get through the day. But now I've had years and years and years and years of that. And I have had emotions come spilling out sometimes at really crazy moments. In fact, one of the people that I work with and, and have a great relationship with now, but initially our first meeting, I he said something like, how are you? And I started crying and it was completely inappropriate, but it just all came out in that moment. And so I've experienced that personally. Um, what was fascinating to me, Renee, is something that you opened my eyes up to that I've been trying to solve for so many years. And again, if you've known me for a while, you know that, that I have struggled with losing weight and I've lost it and gained it back. And, you know, everybody's story, I guess, a lot of people's story that have that challenge. And so I've been trying to solve that and I've been working out like crazy and I've been trying to eat nutritionally and I've been doing all the things that you're supposed to do. I've done Whole30. I've done all of these things. And it hasn't really worked it, or it's only worked for a time. And everybody keeps saying there's something wrong that you're doing wrong. It's a simple equation, calories in, calories out. There's nothing more to it. And I don't believe that's true. I haven't believed that's true. But you so validated that for me, too, as we were working on some of that stuff for me. And what you said, and I'll let you say it better, but <laughs> what you told me was that it was almost like because I'm always almost in this, like, fight or flight or just battling through my days that I haven't had the time to process or do anything. So I'm always in that fight or flight. And so I think the way you described it was, it was like I had the big giant hole in my bucket. So no matter what I put in or even took out, if I was trying to exercise or do these healthy things, there's just giant gaping hole nutritionally for me, or, or maybe you can explain that more, but it was keeping me from having those things have the effect on me that they should have. And so it was just like this, for me, <laughs> huge moment of relief, like, oh, there's not something terribly wrong with me other than what's terribly wrong with me that I need to deal with, but I am not doing something wrong other than having not found a way to address this, and I'm so thrilled to have found you and be able to address this um, in a way that I never even knew existed. So that has been so, so eye-opening and so much hope for me to know. The other thing I think we figured out is that of the excess weight that I'm carrying, I think 80 to 90% of it is this emotional weight, which, again, I kind of probably figured I knew that, but tell me, talk me, correct me on the parts that I'm wrong, but tell me more about all of that and what other people can learn from my own example as well as other examples that you've had of people that you've worked with. So what... So what I have found is that we can actually measure uh, emotional weight on people through using the muscle response testing, uh, which I have done this own thing on myself. And so what we do is we use that part and we really identify, okay, what emotions is going on within those, those particular pounds of weight that we need relief. But speaking to the bear, you know, running from the bear in this bucket, so You've been running from the bear for so long. And uh, Carla Taylor starts her day off uh, in running, and she ends her day running. And so mm -hmm. the, the goal here, or the, the problem is, is since you start your day running, your body never really has an opportunity to have the nice um, ups and downs like, like I normally would have. I, I don't start at... Uh, uh, at 10 at the beginning in the morning. I usually start at about 2, and then I ramp up to 5, and I go back down. Then I ramp up to 7 and go back down, where someone like you starts at 10, ends at 10, so your body never gives a break. Well, the problem with that is is your digestive system cannot keep up with that. So if your digestive hmm. system will actually stop operating at optimal level because it says, you know what? Uh, she is running along too fast. I can't keep up. So all the energy that we need uh, needs to go to the muscles. It doesn't need to go to the digestive system. And then we keep running, we keep running, we keep running. Months turn into years, years keep turning into more years. And so now we say, okay, well, you know, she's going to keep running. She's not going to learn her lesson. So now we're going to start <laughs> shutting Uh-oh, I think we might have missed the last part that you said. Are you still there, Renee? 
Um, okay, so let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to hear more about what Renee was just explaining because I think it's absolutely fascinating. I need to hear it more myself, but I think so many of us start the day running in gear and just never, ever stopping running, and there's so many busy people in my life that I know that are the same. So let's talk more about that when we get back from break. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Okay, so welcome back. We were just hearing from Renee and unfortunately had a little bit of a technical difficulty when she dropped off. This is, again, is Carla Taylor with the Bring Your Brilliance radio show, and we are talking to Renee Deal about energetic living. We were just talking about how um, I discovered through a session about how when you're always running and on the go, your body doesn't respond to the nutrition intake or the things that it was needing. So, Renee, if you could just kind of start there and talk a little bit again more about how that works on our bodies when we don't give ourselves any kind of downtime or any kind of break. So when we don't give ourselves any type of downtime. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Well, I really want to hear this. So I'm hoping that we can hear again. Are you still there, Renee? I am. Oh, there you are. Okay, keep going. I yeah, I have been here. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> Don't you just <laughs> love live or live podcasts? It's, anyway, <laughs> it's all part of it. Live and unfiltered. Here we are. <laughs> live and unfiltered. So when we operate uh, at uh, let's say at a state of ten, our body, our our mind is always uh, hyperactive. And we we go to bed being hyperactive. We wake up being hyperactive, and we're just so busy with our day. It doesn't allow the body to rest, and so therefore, the digestive system will, uh, for lack of better words, will shut down. Now it's doing what it has to do, but it's only doing the minimal instead of being optimized. So the digestive system is to shut down because the energy from the digestive system needs to transfer to the muscles, so that the muscles can power through your day. And then we're going to mm. shut down uh, the reproductive system because we don't need we don't need the reproductive system. The body doesn't, you know, we don't need to be having sex because we got you know we got more <laughs> important things going on in our life than having to worry about sex. That that energy to be being able to even do that. And this is part of the reason that so many women are having so much trouble getting pregnant because they wow. you know they're just so busy in their lives that they can't. This energy is being transferred out to the muscles instead of nourishing their their reproductive and endocrine system. So it's a whole fat, protein, and carb problem where you're not able to digest. And then we got the emotional, and then we have structural. So it's like this huge, this huge. Um, it's just a huge problem. I don't even know how to well, how to say how big it is, but yeah. Well, we know that being too busy can can be a challenge or be hard, but I never really understood the scientific reasons behind how it actually affects our body if all of those, the nutrition and everything, all the energy that we have is going towards this constant feeding of that that always-on response. I was actually just talking to someone who travels all the time and she's super busy and she's hoping to get pregnant, but exactly that. Like our bodies are not prepared to send stuff everywhere so it's going to go to the most important 
immediate need, which is keeping us going for those of us who are movers and shakers. Sometimes we might need to move and shake a little bit less so that we can be healthy and have full health as we go. And that's really what I wanted to talk about is that energy that we need, because I think when we are bringing our brilliance, we do want to bring our best, but we can't always be on and always bringing it out to the world. There really needs to, you really have to find a balance through your day. You have to be able to get the ability to wake up at a normal level and not just jump out of bed and start working. You have to honor the body and what the body can do. And the, when you're someone like yourself that is a, a woman that is constantly on the go, you know, you're going to have to find some really unique ways to really bring your beautiful body down, your beautiful energy down, and just kind of honor that you need to slow down during certain times of your day. So whether you start out a little bit slower in the morning or you give yourself an hour at night just to really, you know, do some meditation, color, slow down, just rest and relax. And I would recommend that of a morning for at least, you know, 30 minutes where you get your day going and at least an hour at the end of your day to get before you end your day. Well, and and that's why, and it's just so funny. I've heard everywhere I go, people talk about the need for a morning routine or an evening routine. And it always felt like, oh, that's a nice to have. I'll do that sometimes. I'll do that when I have time. But truly, it's affecting our health and our bodies and our emotions and everything else that is fed by that, it's not just here's a nice thing to do in your schedule, but it truly is what is going to keep us going and ignite and keep our energy ignited and going to be able to go to <clears throat> fuel all the things that we want to do or we will not be able to do it. And it's not just a matter of exhaustion. It's everything that you just uncovered for us about how it's feeding our body nutritionally and everything else. This is such fascinating stuff. I wish we had another hour to talk to you, and I can't believe how quickly this one has gone by. We are here at the end, so is there anything, uh, one kind of last words of wisdom or something for us to know as well as how to reach you that you'd like to share with us? Uh, absolutely. I can be reached at energeticlivingindy.com, uh, and then uh, I also can be reached at 317-258-2754. And I, I would just really love to work with uh, your, your, your viewers and listeners and just really to explain exactly how the whole energy of the body just can come together in, just, in this beautiful process. Wonderful. Well, I think we're going to be hearing a lot more from you and maybe seeing some articles and different things to hear more about what it is that you do and how you can help. I love that you can help people anywhere in the world. So truly, no matter where you are listening to this, you can reach out and connect with Renee and be able to experience one of her sessions for yourself and see what it is that we're talking about when we're talking about all of these different things. It's really something I think you have to experience to truly understand it. So we will be sharing so much more information about all of this. I love hearing what you do, Renee, and I'd love to, to talk more about it, and maybe we can have a part two very soon. Uh, but thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for going through that session with me so I could truly understand what it is that you do and be able to talk more about it and experience it. And like I said, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more sessions with you because I really feel like you are the missing link that I've had in trying to pull everything together and, and have it work for me in my life. So up next, we have next week, it's actually going to be uh, the first of the Friday of the month. So I will be sharing uh, one of my strategies sessions, which means that I will be talking a little bit more about personal branding what it means for you, and how it can help you in bringing your brilliance to the world. We will see you next week here on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Thanks for listening to another episode of Bring Your Brilliance with Carla Taylor. For the latest updates and info on personal branding, please follow and interact with Carla Taylor on LinkedIn. And be sure to visit www.itstimetobringit.com. Join Carla Taylor every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, keep shining.